Brian Lee with Test Geek Exam Prep. I wanted to uh, show you a couple of hints, uh, some helpful hints for the Series 7 options, problems that you can expect to see on uh, your Series 7 exam. Now, these are frequently asked questions from folks who are studying for their Series 7 uh, over the years as I've gone through the Series 7 class. Uh, these are the most common questions that people ask me. Now, uh, a couple of things that I always try to tell people when they're solving Series 7 option questions. One of the first things you have to do would be to, one, identify what type of option strategy is it. You know, most of the option questions you see can actually be divided into four different option strategies, predominantly the majority of the questions. Those four being uh, individual options, uh, hedges, straddles, slash combinations, which essentially are the same things, and then of course the spreads. Uh, there is a fifth type where you'll see three or four questions on, and those are the non-equity options, uh, but we'd like to discuss those a little bit later. But these are predominantly the, the most that you're going to see on the exam. Okay? Now, when you go through the Series 7 exam, you come across an option question, right? And oftentimes it's a paragraph long question that you see. So the first thing you have to do is determine which of the option strategies it is, okay? Now, they each have their own specific characteristics. The options aerobics diagram, as I like to call, uh, illustrates each one of those strategies that you may see. For example, uh, the individual options, those are the ones in black, uh, oftentimes are simply trading the options, buying and selling, buying and selling the call or put option. Uh, they might have some very fundamental questions on those individual options, maximum gains, maximum losses, break-evens, something like that. Or, like I said, trading the option position, where you're just buying and selling the option. Okay? The hedges, um, I think, are two things that you need to know. One are probably the most numerous option questions you get on the test. They're probably the most common option strategy used out there in the real world. So it would make sense that they are predominantly the, the most that you'll see on the test. Now, very characteristically, second, I think they are the easiest option strategies to identify. You know why? They are the only option strategy that has a stock position. So if you see a stock position with an option, instantly know it's a hedge. Okay. Now, if they ask you to find the break-even for that hedge problem, that's pretty easy. Just do a little T-chart, which I'll illustrate here for you in a second, and let the answer fall to the bottom. You don't even have to think about it, right? And then the second type of hedge problem you may see are strategy, or some people like to refer to them as suitability questions, okay? And, of course, for strategy or suitability questions on hedges, what you're looking for is the secondary purpose, the secondary objective, what the option is actually used for. Is it to help protect against loss or guard against risk is a synonym that you may see. Or is it to, uh, uh, the option used to enhance the profit on the stock? Right? That you may see as generating income or increasing return. So those are the key terms that you want to find in those option, hedge, strategy, or suitability questions, okay? So let's take a look at see some of these, see how our tools might be able to help us in solving some of these problems come testing, okay? So once you've identified the problem, for example, let's do this. Your investor, who currently is long, 100 shares, of XYZ at $50 a share, okay? She fears a near-term correction, but overall, she remains bullish. 
Now, oftentimes and very commonly, you'll see on the test, the next statement, as the registered rep, which would you recommend? I'm going to abbreviate this. Which would you recommend to profit from this situation? Okay? A very common strategy like question that you may see on the Series 7. And of course, the answer choices most likely would be buy a 50 call, buy a 50 put, sell a 50 call, sell a 50 put. Okay? Now, so what did we say? First step, recognize the option strategy. Now, um, you're thinking, well, where's the options here, right? You know, the test question isn't indicating, per se, that this is an option problem. But hopefully, the answer choices do, right? I mean, all the answers are options, so obviously it's an option problem. Now, so which strategy is it? Well, she's long 100 shares of stock. Boom. Instantly, no, it's a hedge. A stock position with an option. Okay? And since the answer choices are in words, not numbers, we know there's no computation here. It's a strategy question, okay? Or suitability question, whichever you prefer. Okay? So you don't have to worry about T charts or computing anything. As a matter of fact, of the 20 to 25 option questions you'll get. The most common response I hear from folks is that the computational problems are usually no more than 10. Less than half of the option questions typically are computational. A lot of them are the strategy slash suitability questions. Okay? So again, we know that because the answer choices are in words. So, we've identified it as a hedge, a stock position with an option. Okay? Now, remember, in our strategy, we're using the option for one of two things. To either protect the stock or to generate income, increase return, right? Increase the overall profit in the stock. So which one is it? And that's where this gets fun because uh, she fears a near-term correction, but overall she remains bullish. These, of course, are what I refer to as test distractors. They're there to make you make some sort of assessment or to analyze. And of course, we know what happens when you do that, right? You become paralyzed, right? Paralysis by analysis. So they're really just distractors. With options, with hedges, you're looking for the two main strategies either of which, of course, is what the investor is looking for. And that's what we need to find, not the distractors. Of course, she's bullish. She owns stock, right? And fears, of course, don't we all, is basically what is her risk. But again, these are distractors. What we're looking for are those secondary objectives, right? Protect or profit. And there it is right there, profit. Now. Our options aerobics diagram can help us actually to answer this question. The red arrows are what's used to um, illustrate the hedges. The blues, of course, are straddles, and the greens are for spreads. Okay, so obviously it's a hedge. We're looking at uh, the red arrows. And now notice there's two of them. One is for long stock. The other one is if the investor is shorting the stock. Quite obviously, she is long the stock, so that tells us we're on these arrows. Now, here's one of the most common questions I get. Well, why is it pointing to the down arrows if she is bullish? Well, the option arrows are indicating the risk direction. Obviously, if you're long stock, your risk is that the stock will fall down. And that's why these are the two options that we use. Uh, just for a point of fact, when you're short stock, your risk is the stock's going up, and that's why we're using those two options. Okay, so anyway, uh, she's long stock, she, uh, her risk is that it goes down, so this is the arrow that we're on. So now notice, why are there two 
arrows or two options when you're long stock. Well, one is there to protect the stock. The other one there is to increase your profit. So which one? Well, as my dad always once told me when I was very, very young, he says, son, if you want to know anything in this world, you always want to buy for protection. Okay? So we're always buying the options to protect the stock. We're always selling for profit. That's kind of easy to remember. Right? You buy for protection, you sell for profit. So <coughs> if you are looking to enhance profit, that means we're going to sell. Since we're long stock, we want a profit, therefore we would sell the call. Okay? That's actually a long, drawn-out description, but really it makes the question so much easier. If you are hedging, right, we're looking for uh, the secondary objectives. And then, of course, depending on whether you're long or short the stock, determines which option you're going to be using. Okay? So there is one example of a Series 7 option questions. Um, let's take a look at another one. Now, this next one I'd like to show you uh, gets a little bit more involved. It's probably one of the more challenging option questions that you may see. So, and it involves uh, quite a few things all at one time. So, first of all, let's just say your customer uh, is long 100 shares XYZ at $49 a share. And is long an XYZ 50 put at 5. Okay? So, I told you now, you know, the most important thing, one of the first things you do is you want to identify the option strategy. A stock with an option, again, it's a classic hedge, okay? But whether or not that's going to be all that important for us, we'll, we'll see here in a second, okay? Now, just prior to expiration, the customer I'm going to paraphrase here a little bit, closes the option for a premium of $2. Okay? Now again, there's that phrase that we've seen in some of our practice questions, right? Closes the position. They close the option. Which again, if you remember, for an individual option, that simply means they're trading. They're disposing of their option contract. Okay? And whatever you do to open the option position, right, buy or sell, well, obviously, you're going to do the opposite transaction to close. Okay? So since this investor first bought the put, what this is saying is we're now going to sell this put for a premium of $2. Okay? Uh, oh, by the way, it says when the stock is trading at $49 a share, which, again, really doesn't mean anything. We're closing the option, not the stock, at this point. Okay? Now, later, with XYZ trading at $55. Your customer then sells the stock. See what I mean? A lot of things going on here. Well, um, let's throw this at you just for fun. For tax purposes, right, that starts making half the people start to shudder. <laughs> for tax purposes, what is the gain or loss? And there it is. Paragraph long, several transactions, couple things going on here. Now, again, the answer choices can help us clue in as to how to solve this. We're going to have $300 gain, $300 loss, $600 gain, $600 loss. Okay? So, Obviously, you can see the answer choices are in numbers now. 
Now, to me, I think those are the easiest questions on the test. I, you know, I like math. I've been good at math. Math doesn't intimidate me. But if it does or doesn't, it really doesn't matter because if your answer choices are in numbers, that's when you want to do your t chart And all you have to do, really, is to follow each and every transaction. The dollars amount that are going out of the investor's account or into their account, right? Of course, now, when does money go out? Whenever you buy something. That's true whether you're talking about investments or, or whatever. Uh, and when does money come into your account? Of course, when you sell something. So again, like I said, all you got to do is really track the transactions. So, step by step. See, this is a little bit involved, isn't it? There's quite a few transactions going on here. But just take it transaction by transaction. We buy the stock for 49 bucks a share. So obviously, that's $4,900, right? Now, you can do it either in whole numbers or in total dollar amounts, right? They're all just factors of 100 anyway. Okay, so we spend $4,900 on the stock. We then bought the put for another $500. Okay, that's simple enough. That's not a problem. Now, here's where people get stuck with it again because of that phrase closing the position, closing the option. Again, all that means is we're simply now trading the option. We're just going to sell it back to on the exchange. For how much? For a premium of $200. So that's a sale of that option for $200. We then, of course, sell the stock later at $55. The customer sells the stock. So again, that's $5,500 in. And guess what? You're done. There's really no thought or analysis to it as long as you just track the transactions. Right? That's 5,400 out, 5,700 in for a total gain of $300. Okay? Boom. There's your answer. Gain of 300. Wasn't so bad, was it? See, that's what I said, man. Anytime I don't have to think or overthink, just throw the numbers in a T chart and let the answer fall to the bottom. I love it. Those are my favorite types of questions. Okay? So we've seen a couple of different questions. We've seen a hedge, and boy, I don't even know how you classify this thing. Yeah, it's initially a hedge, but then of course we're trading the stock and the option and those sorts of things. So it's a little bit more involved. Again, one of the more challenging ones, I don't think you'll see a lot like this. I know this one does show up on the test or something similar to it. Uh, but again, if you know which strategy you're starting with, okay, then you can let your options cheat sheet help you to answer the questions. Use the aerobics diagram to help identify which strategy you're talking about, right? These arrows are pointing to the options that are contained in each strategy, right? A long straddle has a long call and a long put in it. So these arrows are pointing to the options that are contained within that strategy. So those are meant primarily to help you to identify. The options cheat sheet then will help you to answer those strategies. That's how that's supposed to work, okay? Now, um, if this is the first time you've seen these, you can find how we build these out. We build these out step by step, strategy by strategy, on our options tutorial video. Options tutorial video. And of course, it's also embedded in the Series 7 video course. Okay. So I've, I've actually separated this out from the Series 7 class. It's also included within it. Uh, but sometimes people just need some <laughs> extra help with the options. So I've actually separated them out into two different video courses, if that's the way you choose. Or you can find it all in one in the Series 7 video course. You can find either of these on our website, testgeekexamprep.com. 
Then you click on the Courses tab at the top of the page, okay? Uh, and then View All Classes, okay? Because I have the Series 7 and the 6 and the 65 and the 66 and the 24 and all those good things on there. So uh, if you want to see how these things are built out, uh, how we take you step by step through constructing the Options Aerobics Diagram, and where that name comes from, of course, and also building out each strategy on our video courses. You can find those on our video platform. I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, you can please feel free to uh, uh, shoot me an email if you like. It would be brian at testgeekexamprep.com. Simple enough for the email. Love to hear from you. Um, again, I hope that helps. Have a great day and go get that P, right? Got to pass that test the first time. Take care. We'll see you soon.